Let's face it, right? If you're under 40, you're not really going to retire, are you? Are you actually? So let's keep it real and talk about what's relevant and get a grip on how smart financing can shape our lives for the better. In the FIRE community itself, we bang on about two words quite a bit interchangeably, I suppose. Early retirement and financial freedom. Now, the mindset of FIRE is pretty powerful. But if you're young, say under 40, then I think those concepts are quite hard to relate to or be relevant and why FIRE is such a difficult objective as it is. FIRE being the mantra of aggressive savings to retire early and live off investment returns. And I have learned a lot from FIRE, don't get me wrong, but I don't think they're relevant, especially for us who work as freelancers, but even with job mobility and now the trend towards working from home, the goal should be adapted to financial flexibility. We really have two routes to take at the financial savvy junction, right? The financial savvy mindset that is obsessed over retirement and achieving it as quickly as possible, or devise a strategy that satisfies your financial needs now and all stages of life as you mature through it. And the fact is there is no escaping time, guys. So let's just get into it and start by covering the definition first. Retirement is where we give up a position of active work, draw from working life and it follows the pattern of study, work, marry, buy a house, have a family, work some more, retire and then die. Gosh how depressing and out of touch does that sound. Now financial freedom or financial independence is a little bit different. The definitions can vary but Dave Ramsey, I'm a huge fan, puts it quite well as financial independence doesn't just mean sitting on some tropical beach or playing golf all the time, it means reaching the point where you don't have to work a full-time job if you don't want to. So you can scale back to a part-time job or simply stop working altogether. The choice actually is yours and that is the power in it. The reality is that the majority of millennials won't really be able to reach either. Actually, let me rephrase that a second. The majority of baby boomers, millennials and Gen X and most likely Gen Z won't be able to reach it either. Either retirement or financial independence. Majority. Damn, when you really think about it, work guy. Is that okay? It's a retirement crisis, guys. It's very clear that traditional retirement plans are are not enough, they fail. Yet we keep pushing the same narrative, the same concepts, the same tactics. Now you're thinking Fifi's going off on a rant. But I'm not, there is method to my madness. Well, what's the answer then? We're told, pay yourself first, don't buy that morning latte, save 500 pounds a month for 40 years. We even get advice to save 40% of our income so that we can have 50% of our income given back to us after the age of 65. The problem with that is that it's unreasonable. It doesn't work, it leads to crisis and stress. And so in practice, it's pretty difficult difficult to apply. And the big issue is that if people are generally struggling to have enough money to retire in four to five decades, which is the normal working horizon, then how on earth can you expect someone to have enough money saved in one to two decades? It's quite absurd really. And yes, I'm still ranting, but <laughs> stay with me. A select few can actually do that. And the most rabid amongst us, they stay the course, stay committed and have a few lucky steps along the way with the investments to pull it off. However, if we cannot hit fire or if we can't really put Put enough away to save for retirement in the conventional sense. We're made to look a little bit daft and that is supposed to be our fault. Everyone's situation is different and sure one family may be able to save 100% of the spouse's income but that doesn't mean it's applicable to everybody and all, right? Everyone has a unique set of circumstances, of course, and it's about having a mindset to optimize the cards that you're dealt with. I'm going to talk about a basic starter kit approach on how to save budget and invest to give a nice start to get serious about building towards financial flexibility. Financial flexibility, this is the power in. It's a little bit different to FIRE itself. Actually, I'd say it's about 50% of FIRE. The financial independence mantra part only. It doesn't follow the traditional path to retirement. It's not about having enough money to quit work. Instead, it aims at having enough by using doable means to not justify an end, but a realistic series of start, stops and resets and restarts, depending on how your life circumstances change and evolve. It makes us look a little bit differently than hopefully our parents did. Being financially flexible will still require you to be thoughtful with your money and take your personal finances seriously compared to say your peers or relatives or whoever it is that you're surrounded by. But what's refreshing is that it will not be a depressing 
40 year plan or absolutely killing the zeal for life now you have adopted a fire mindset and decided to live on hummus and pitta your whole life and like i said we can be flexible but we don't need to subscribe to retirement in the conventional sense or fire in the conventional sense to achieve it they're no longer relevant and why am i saying that firstly the first tip is to keep pots we often think about budgets and allocating money we associate it with being the boring aspect of personal finance it's hard to hold ourselves to account and a budget doesn't allow that having pots of money to put to certain jobs provides that flexibility and here's one way to think about it approach pots of money as the first one the subsistence fund this is about one and a half to two months of your salary to cover your living expenses and also breaking that paycheck cycle a second pot should cover the loss of income for about three to six months and that is the emergency fund then set up a separate discretionary pot for needs and what they in your apartment children futures all of that fancy jazz and finally we should think about the transition fund and this is where we can cover breaks stops start and transitions and it will bring certain parts of your life into question already approaching pots to life like this you realize the size of these pots is dependent on how much living expenses you actually need and ideally you minimize the cost of living as much as possible create that cash flow and discipline and focus on your budget and spending to get rid of your discretionary spending habits which you decide that are no longer necessary like eating out in restaurants or hanging out in bars likewise this will trigger you to become aware of lifestyle creep and you have to be strong enough to say no now i am mostly modest but i have to say i am a budget ninja and i get a weird joy and i think my husband does as well of having everything in my accounts allocated it gives me comfort that all my money has a job which brings me nicely onto the second point around having a budget and that is once you have a budget and give jobs to your money you'll be able to see your free cash and invest that and by not investing your free cash you have just given it a slow death allowing inflation to chip away at it <laughs> sorry to get a little bit gory on this sure you might not have all these pots filled on day one one and that's completely fine it will still take a lot of work to fill those pots up and establish financial independence and being flexible however you will have an approach to personal finance that more closely matches your lifestyle and feels a little bit more attainable and that is you make money you pay your bills prepare for the unexpected you save to improve your situation keeping money aside for transitioning and then also investing the rest to build that wealth and the importance of making transitions and adapting our personal finances allows to measure our finances with the life we want to lead. And that was my main point, guys. We don't need to be attached to a job, company, location, or lifestyle, which allows our life to adapt to our desires. We work because we have a plan and not attached to the grind of having a job that we might want to get out of. And it's so important to design our lives to allow us to be happy and live in the present. We write, we create, we think, we innovate, we watch the crown, and that's all fine. We do these things because we enjoy them and we want to better ourselves. And in our professional lives, we will embrace change we embrace and plan for those breaks the thing is that we can be really stressed and anxious when we live to only work instead by adapting a sound mindset and financial philosophy to lead the lifestyle we want to i refuse to retire like the prior generation and be a wrinkly mess by that point nor can i adopt a crazy fire mindset and wish that i live instead of taking an approach to living a purposeful life being realistic and flexible having a budget so i can spend where i want to spend and make my money work for me so I can be present. Now, personal finance itself is a practical approach to money, but it's also a philosophy, a mindset. And so here are a handful of videos about money and happiness, and also investing and why having a budget is so important, guys. I'll see you there.